In part four of this series, we're talking about some of the unique features coming to Genopets, including my favorite feature that I'm looking forward to, which is skill-based battling. That's right, it's skill-based. Kevin goes into details on all these features coming into the game, including socialify, challenges, and achievement systems, how they're battling cheaters, and much, much more. Let's go ahead and dive into part four of this series. So, so let's talk a little bit about the gameplay. And um, this game is not what most uh, most are probably used to in the move to earn space, right? There's no stopping your run. Uh, there's no starting your run. You don't have to open it to stop your run. Uh, you don't have to be outside moving for your steps to count. When it comes to anything with games, people are always looking to cheat the game, right? They're, they're always looking for, for ways to exploit the game, looking for an edge, for an advantage. Um, so what are some of the mechanisms that the team is implementing to prevent cheating? And this is uh, submitted by Nenchi. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question, one that we get a lot. And boy, do I know that if there's something that can be exploited, it will be. We're addressing it in a few different ways. And I think a, a, a diverse approach helps us here. First, I mentioned how steps need to be converted into energy to be used in the game. Energy is not a token. It's literally just what, it's like action points, right? Within the game that you can use for any purpose, leveling up, earning, uh, exploring battle, all of that is gonna require energy. The steps to energy conversion, however, follows an exponential decay function where every incremental step you take is gonna give you slightly less energy, such that it's not to your benefit to walk 50, 60, 70,000 steps a day. I mean, unless you naturally do so, or that's really your goal, but in terms of earning energy to use in the game, you're gonna be getting marginally less and less. Um, and we did that on purpose because we didn't want people, even if cheating wasn't a concern, this is not a game where we want people to be walk, trying to walk 100,000 steps in a day and, and injuring themselves. Right. So there is a natural decay uh, for the, 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 a diminishing return on, on each step you take built into just the baseline formula. On the back end, we're looking at the data now and uh, at this point, it's just about continuing to collect data and uh, get smarter about identifying problematic or, or um, exploitative uh, walking or behavior and then punishing those, those users. Now it's web three, so it's very difficult to come up with the right sort of penalty. Right now, I think we're just banning game accounts. Um, but the basis for that is we look at, you know, how many, we, we look at a number of factors, but essentially at a high level, looking at how many steps you walk, what the cadence of it was, the timing, um, how much of an outlier you are versus the rest of the population. These are just a few of the factors that go into the decision-making on the back end. But I gotta say, you know, it's it's pretty obvious when someone is cheating, when you have all of that data in front of you. And so that that's kind of what's powering our decision-making on the back end. And that that model will only get smarter as we go. Yeah, and, and, and it sucks because there's always a few bad apples that ruin it for, you know, the majority of the community. So that's always something that that sucks, but it's some it's a reality of any any game, really. It, it doesn't matter what game it is. There's always going to be those people looking to try to exploit it one way or that's the right. other. Um, and at this point, we embrace it as part of the design challenge. You know, it's it's part of what it means to build in Web3, that you accept that players will take it seriously, and if you are careless, they will make you pay for that. And from my perspective at this point, I just embrace it as, as part of the journey, and uh, it makes certainly game design a lot more exciting from our perspective. So other than, move, then of course, moving, um, what are some of the other features that, uh, other than just walking and moving, that will keep the game fun? I know you mentioned uh, the battling is coming up. That's a feature that's coming up. Um, you've mentioned some of the stuff with, with the habitats that you'll be able to do. Um, now, uh, what, what are some of the other features that are going to be in the game? Yeah, I think battle is a huge one um, because typically in our own style, we have to, we want to make battle our way. And it's, a, it, it's not going to be, or at least, you know, the way we're developing it, we don't want it to be this very, you know, take your turn selecting your attack and then there's a random number generator in the back and maybe your attack was super effective we want it to be more dynamic and so there's going to be you know the strength of your geno pet but there's also a, a skill element a live skill element involved as well that will make battle very interesting um i'm all the other big piece of gameplay that i'm really excited about that's uh, a little bit closer on the roadmap is what we're generally calling nurture 
and that's just pet interaction and bonding. So feeding your pet, playing with your pet, petting your pet, um, these might all seem like very simple actions, but we we're incorporating a lot of expressions, reactions, dynamism within the pets themselves that I think players will really enjoy. Like petting your pet is just awesome. <laughs> I've just been testing it a little bit. It, it's eyes light up, it's dancing around it. It's so cute. But you know, that's that's also gonna have some serious impact on gameplay because the way we're tying it all together is if you nurture your pet well, you're gonna it's gonna be more efficient. It's gonna convert energy better. It's going to be in a better mood. It's gonna be more effective. Um, and so these are just some some of the elements of gameplay that probably don't sound all that new uh, compared to the traditional games, but we just have our own spin on it um, within within the context of our of our game. And and I'm glad to hear that there's gonna be some skill element to the um, to the battle. It's not just a random number generator. Um, I absolutely. I, you know, I played another move to earn game where you know it was with cats and and you know but it, that's just random there's no skill base it was all random and you lost most of the time i i think i was keeping track and it there was i had like a 25 percent win percentage and it was all random so there's nothing i could do so you know a, a little bit of variance is keeps things interesting but i think right. for us and maybe this comes from us being passionate gamers that love games like starcraft like we we are building a skill based game it will reward dedication, skill, and creativity more than anything. And I think, honestly, that's the only way to create a game that is meaningful to people. And only when you have a meaningful game can you create enough value for people to earn. And so that that is pivotal to what we do. You need to be able to look at another player and be like, wow, that player did well. And so that's why that what they're doing is worth more or is, more, is valuable, or I want to aspire to that. And that's the kind of gamer mentality that we want to cultivate within even just the bones of the, of the game that we're designing. This kind of connects with this next question that I have, and it's, it's about the social fight aspect to the game. Um, I, know, I know you guys already have the leaderboards implemented into the app. Um, I know you guys have the, like we just spoke about, the battle features coming up. That's gonna be, that's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, Will, will there be challenges and maybe an achievement system or, or anything like that? Yeah, definitely, definitely in the works. Um, I think it just makes a ton of sense, right? Like, hey, you have, if you've walked and hit your step goal five days in a row, we should celebrate that. If your pet is, has been in a great mood, max mood for 10 days straight, we should celebrate that. It, you know, everything within the game um, can be turned into an achievement or a challenge. Uh, it, you know, honestly, at this point, it's just a resource prioritization exercise. It's like, should we build that or should we build this other thing first? Right. And that, you know, we're trying to grow the team as we build the game. And sometimes it's just tough. Everything has to go in order, unfortunately. Um, that question was submitted by Nathan Chapo. So thank you, Nathan. AR, VR. Are there any plans for VR and AR in the future for this game? That's a good question maybe something ar related but you know at this point it's just it's just ideas and, and i think we're seeing as far as augmented or virtual reality is concerned comp gaming companies really kind of choosing one or the other like i'm going to build a world in vr that i'm going to pull you into as the player i want you to immerse yourself physically into my world whereas ar is more about maintaining your presence in the physical world but the game is like an enhancement right it allows you to interact with the physical world in new ways and that the latter is much more i think in spirit and, and in mission um aligned with what we're trying to do so right now the currently the game is invitation only uh will the app do you guys plan on always keeping it invitation only or do you ever uh plan on opening it up no we do not want to keep it invite only um the plan is to open it up fully publicly the apps are you know, already conditionally approved for, you know, pu full public release. We're just choosing to keep it on invite code right now. And the, the real reason for that is because we are building this whole thing the Web3 way. If we had done it in a traditional way, no one would even know that Geno Pets exists right now. We would all be in some dark headquarter facility building the game in secret, and then we get a huge marketing budget and we go launch, and now everyone knows what it is, right? And we can, we can start focusing on acquisition. Unfortunately, that's not how we've done it. We've done it, we, we are building open kitchen style. The community gets to see what we're building almost every day. 
they feed, they provide feedback, they have input. And so we are building as we go. We are laying down the railroad tracks as the train is going. And so what that what, what that really means is, you know, it's it's a slower process, but it's a more inclusive process. And that also means that we are not ready yet to, you know, just to open the floodgates with user acquisition. We've seen what happens sometimes when when you open too fast and you allow yourself to be buried by just the amount of new people coming in. We know people are, are so thirsty and ready for, for more, but, um, you know, I, I, I would ask the, the community to, to trust us a little bit. We are continuously increasing the number of invite codes out there, and eventually we will get to a fully public launch, but we, need, we also need the actual game and the product to be able to support that each step along the way. Yeah, and for those looking for invite code right now, if you're watching this video currently, drop a comment in this video and I will be giving out some invite codes for those uh, engaging with this video uh, who tuned in this far. So make sure to do that. Uh, I'll be giving yeah, away some invites. Yeah, a few ways you can get one right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, and, and those last two questions were from Rui, Rui Mello and MJ Crypto. So they'll also be winning some invite codes for submitting those questions. I hope you guys have enjoyed part four of this interview with Gino Pets COO, Kevin Kim. If you guys want a free activation code, I have 100 to give away. Drop a comment below referencing your favorite part of this video with your thoughts or comments on it. And of course, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Goes without saying. If you have made it this far already, then you don't want to miss the last and final piece of the puzzle, part five. In part five, we talk about the elephant in the play to earn room, sustainability, and tokenomics. And I asked Kevin the tough questions. I even asked him about Ponzi-nomics, and I think you'll be surprised at his answer. Just click the video on the screen to watch part five right now. I hope you guys haven't been watching all these videos without subscribing. If you have, make sure to smash subscribe right now. I'll see you in part five. Peace and love.